Hey, I am going to do a dis review of Ubuntu. Now, I know what some of you are saying. You're probably thinking that hell has literally and legitimately just frozen over. Although, biblically, I don't think that is possible, but hey, what do I know? So, this is kind of how it's going to go, right? I'm not going to install Ubuntu in this video because it's like a simple ubiquity installer. You click five times yada 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 you get it right and so today i just want to make a good video about some of the changes that have occurred since i have last looked at ubuntu kind of what they're up to what are the default packages are they the same from what i remember those sorts of things right and i think it's an interesting video because honestly i don't think I have looked at Ubuntu even one time in eight years. I'm going into this blind as a bat, and I just want to take you on for the journey. So let's go, everyone. All right, let's get started with Ubuntu, shall we? I think it's my super complicated password, maybe. Okay, yes. Now, this was not the wallpaper out of the gate. Let's go ahead and put the new wallpaper on. It's right here. No, sorry. Let's get the wallpaper desktop icon. Oh, right. It said background. I saw it. Change background. Let's change the default background back to where it was. Okay. All right. Here we are. So, uh, let's look at and see what we get out of the box. I did do like the normal. I didn't do like the full download, but we have a lot of really good. Um, we have this uh, desktop, like virtual desktop that you can choose from and different things. Or and I don't know what this search thing is because I think it searches um, what like open. Let, let, let's try. It. OK, let me see. I think it it. So let's just open a couple of things, right? And let's see what we got here. All right, let's see here. Uh, okay. Oh, this is a lot like the... Oh, right, I got it. This makes a lot of sense. This is just like the... um the unity thing the unity dash i think or something i think it was called right awesome all right i got gotcha. you not bad i could probably live with that i was thinking that it only would search for open desktops but that makes a lot of sense this is very similar to the unity desktop although this it has mutter instead of like I used to use Compiz with um, <laughs> with Unity because I loved all the you know um, all the bells and whistles. Here's the main menu and that sort of thing. This is pretty cool. Uh, the one thing that I will say is I was kind of looking at this just briefly, and there was one thing that really just kind of irked me, and I'm gonna try and see if I can. Find it here. Okay, so it isn't here. I did see a place where I could, for example, uh, lay down the um, the side panel, which I think this is really awesome. But at the same time, I I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I think about this. Uh, Okay, I don't see it here. Ubuntu desktop. Okay, here we go. Panel mode. Okay, so the position on screen is the left. This bothers me, right? The menu is clear over here. This menu. Why isn't it in the same position? The lower left-hand corner. It always is in the lower left-hand corner. And I know what it is. I, I'm pretty sure that, and if I remember right, I did read about this. Um, 
I read a couple of threads about this in Gnome's uh, in their uh, Git history, and a lot of people had suggested this way back in the day, and they just basically gave a big fu. I think, if I remember right, that's what happened, because when they gave the ability to position like your icons and the uh, and and the bar itself they pretty much did the exact bare minimum um uh, if i'm being perfectly honest and so right now this is interesting top right Oh, I see. Bottom right. So it will go underneath here. Okay, I got it. So I could choose to go up top or on the bottom. That's actually not a bad idea. I would probably support that. Size of the icons. I could I could get behind that too. Appearance, dark or default. Um, I hate light this uh light themes. They have some really cool wallpapers. Um, I'll say. Right out of the box. And let's just take a look at some of the, let me take a look at some of these. Uh, so they got the software center. Now I uh, installed our door because I just wanted to see like how fast things install. Snap packs always install really fast. So Caden Live, our door and GIMP did not come out of the box in this. Um, I expected G edit. But I don't think this is. I'm going to double check this. Um, let's see. Yeah. It's just a. It's just a random text editor. Um, they used to have G-Edit. I don't know what happened to that. Or Genie. Uh, it used to be kind of a, a GNOME thing. And I actually do like Genie. And G-Edit. Um, I've used those pretty interchangeably. I do like them. Um, I don't know if I like this or not. This might be, may or may not be a good, uh, a good thing at all. Firmware updater. So you can update your firmware. You can like look at certain devices. Like say if you have like an NVIDIA card or something like this. They might have an update for you. System monitor. This one is really cool because this will tell you a lot of information about what's going on and with what, from what I understand. Yeah. And so, like, if I... Oh, they won't. Okay. I thought if I made it bigger, it would... Uh, okay, file systems. Okay, it tells you how much disk space is used and that sort of thing which actually is rather interesting. I guess that's not too bad, 14.9 gigabytes. And I do have a couple of things installed on here. So yeah, not bad. I actually really like everything that I'm seeing so far. Um, Gnome notwithstanding, would I ever use it? I don't think so, but it makes a lot of sense. And it makes certainly a lot more sense than it used to. Um, I don't see, you know, like, uh, let me see here. Uh, can I? Okay. So say, let's see here. I think I've figured this out. Okay. So you do have a virtual desktop uh, sort of thing. Okay. Okay, and so if I go here again, I have another desktop, and I can just uh, control, control alt arrow, and I can choose between them. This is good, and actually, this is way way more sleek than it used to be. It used to be very clunky, and honestly, I really didn't like it. And so now, if I go over here, they're going to show me the different desktops that there are. If I go here, I just basically control alt or i can click on this i'm assuming right yeah 
you know, this is, I have to say, as much hate as I've given the GNOME desktop, and I still am not too thrilled with the GNOME devs. The virtual desktops make a lot of sense. I actually wouldn't mind using something like this if I were going to use a desktop. Um, I'm not. Let's see. I wanted to kind of get a feel for. Um, wanted to get a feel for how much um, resources are being used. So let's take another look at the system monitor. Let's look at the resources. Okay. So I got a couple of. I got a couple of applications open. It's right at about 2.1 gigabytes, which is pretty consistent with a, a, a heavy duty desktop environment. And I don't think this is terrible. I, I just have to say, I, I don't think that the work that has been put into this is terrible. It, could I, could I, I think this would be big thing for like people who are coming from max i think they would get along with this i think this would make a lot of sense for them i know the unity desktop made a lot of sense for me because i was com pretty much coming from mac and so it made a lot of sense for me i think this would make a lot of sense for for those people and i think that they would enjoy this um everything seems pretty legit um Again, I I don't know if you know if I'm gonna face a lot of the shenanigans. Like, what happens when I install Kubuntu or I install Plasma, I install XFCE, I install all these desktop environments? What happens? Does my Grub uh, cease to boot? What happens? I I'm really genuinely curious about this. This is a point. This is a a major selling point for me. I'm really genuinely curious about it. And that would be the only other thing that I would have as a, a major criticism is, is it buggy like it used to be? Now, I was using this a little while ago. Uh, I think it was last night, just kind of taking a look. And this was the only one I've taken a look at at all. And the external error message came on the one that i used to see in unity all the time so it makes me think and, and again i don't want to be hating because maybe it's just a, a random stupid error and it doesn't mean anything but it tells me that this may be almost as buggy as unity was that's a possibility now again i'm not hating i'm just saying objectively unity was rather buggy from the very get-go all the way to 1804 it was rather buggy if i'm being perfectly honest i don't know if this is different this might actually be way more stable i don't know anyway that's my review of ubuntu and now for kubuntu let's go all right Let's just start with my super complicated password. All right. Is there a way to make this full screen? Like usually there's a, okay. I think there is actually. A display monitor. Yes. Very good. Perfect. Very good. Okay. We're in business. All right, this looks pretty nice. If I'm, if I do say so myself, I kind of like this already. I, I don't care for the light theme personally. That's what. Oh, I didn't say keep. Okay, my bad. Okay, I, that boggled me. Okay, so I really like this kind of layout kind of thing. I always have liked the Plasma desktop. This is obviously Plasma 5. So very interesting choice. 
Um, I would have thought that they were already on to Plasma 6, but apparently... Oh, maybe they are. Maybe they are. No, they're not. Because they have that floating um, panel. And I don't see it at all. Yeah. Unless, maybe I, I might be mistaken about that. But it looks like Plasma 5. Very good stuff here. I I have to say I'm already kind of uh, way more impressed with some of the work that has been done again. Well, let's just take a look at it. Let's see what we got right out of the box. Um, I hate this menu. This is the worst menu ever. Can I change it? I, I wish they wouldn't have this menu. I, I really do because it's like the worst menu ever. This is the one thing about Plasma I just wish they would... There's two things about Plasma I wish they would do away with. I wish they would do away with K-Wallet, and I think I wish they would do away with this. Show alternatives, yeah. Oh, this is good. So, um, kind of a beautiful desktop. Let's actually, I do want to turn that into maybe a dark theme. And so, let's go with something cool. I have some really cool wallpaper. I, that's the one thing that I like about Plas Plasma is that they always do have some pretty cool wallpapers. That's cool. Now, let's go ahead and color some themes. Okay, breeze dark is good. Let's apply them. Colors. I really honestly could care less, but let's say that. I don't like the night light thing. I hate it, in fact. So I know some people say it saves my eyes or something, and it probably does. Um, I actually like that one better. Oxygen is way better. And let's see what we got. Um, let's just do like something like that. Like, have like a standard. Ooh, I see why they're not doing that. Okay, let's go breeze dark. Okay, I think that will work for right now. Okay, now let's just take a look at what we got. Um, we have Kate. Uh, this is a really, really badass text editor. And I saw some things where they might be including some AI stuff, some like chat GPT stuff to include with this. Um, it was a proposal that was proposed very recently. I don't know where it went, but I did see that proposal. Um, KDE's usually ahead of the game in a lot of things. I don't care what games they have. Uh, Gwen View, great. Libre Office, Ocular. Ocular is great, by the way. Um, scan Light, so to scan. Scan Page, ooh, interesting. I don't know if I've ever used scan page, so I I'd like to actually know more about it. Neo chat, very good. Thunderbird, Firefox, Element. I think I I chose to install Element. Elisa and Haruna, very good choices there. I personally prefer like MPV, but uh, Haruna I've heard really good things about. Um, Libre Office, Ocular again. Science and math. Okay, you got a few things there. Nothing, just Libre math. Okay. You got input method, system settings, and what is this? FCITX4. Okay. I don't know what that is, but I honestly don't. Um, I Again, I don't use Ubuntu. It must have something to do with that, maybe. I'm just guessing. F oh, let's see here. Here's F, whatever that acronym is. But it won't launch. Okay, great. That must not. Character select, good. Um, not that I care. Emoji selector, spectacle. Oh, 
oh wow okay so this is like a okay so this is your uh screenshot um this is for your screenshots very good i again i haven't really visited this for a while let's look at the system monitor let's look at the overview okay it's being okay um i have a couple applications open it's using 2.1 gigabytes of ram um cpu is a little high for my liking but it's understandable i'm in a virtual machine um Let's look at some of the applications and the CPU. So basically most of the CPUs is directly coming from the system monitor, which is mind boggling to me. But, you know, it is what it is. I actually though, really, really like uh, reviewing this distro. There's a lot of the good things, a lot of good takeaways from this. Um, they're doing a lot of really good work. You know, a lot of a lot of the development come carries over. Like the desktop environment is about 80% of it, right? Or maybe even 90%. It, but the little things like the app store. Let's just take a look at it. the app store. This is a really good example where it's just really good and it works and everything works about it. I remember and I think it was 1604 when they changed the uh the app store and let's just say it this way it sucked. This works. Like let's just take a look at Yakquake drop down terminal. Let's just install it. I can. And we have reviews. I love Yakway. Oh, right up here. I'm blind as a bat, obviously. Okay. It's installed. I can launch it. Okay. F12, it is. And there I am. I have Yakway these things are working and they're firing on all cylinders i'm just gonna say i really like this i like that the things that they are focusing on like maybe say the software center or discover in this in this instance they're doing it right right now dolphin like who doesn't like dolphin i mean honestly like they were the first ones to have screen splitting capabilities here so that you can work back and forth. They were the first ones to do it. They were the first ones to have um, to have thumbnails. So like if you have pictures, I don't think I have any, but if I did, like there's thumbnails. Yeah, I don't have any pictures, but if I did, you would see thumbnails in here if they're, I think if they're chosen, right? this is all of these little intangibles make a lot of sense and there's been a lot of really good work with plasma but also with ubuntu i mean ubuntu does a lot of you know kind of behind the scenes stuff with plasma with gnome with xfce so on and so forth they do and now lubuntu let's get it on I'm really having a good time here. Okay, so let's see here. What do we got here? We're going to power up Ubuntu. I'm really excited to see what what they have. Um, okay, so we have kind of a small screen. Let's see what they have here. Open box LXQT desktop Ubuntu. Um, I'm a fan of all three of those projects. Personally, here we are. Wow, this looks kind of nice. Now, I have made a couple of changes because I was actually trying to get the right click to have an actual menu. And I think I know what the issue is. I just don't think that they it comes with the right 
Steam for me to have a right click menu. It's neither here nor there. I just thought it would be nice to have one for the video to kind of show that you could do that, but I couldn't find it. Comes obviously with PC Man FM QT. Dude, like if you don't like PC Man FM, there's just something wrong with you. I, I, I just have to be honest. Like this is probably the best uh this is probably the best file browser I've seen in a while. Uh you know, it's like Dolphin, except just much lighter. And I like Thunar as well. There, I like both of these about equally. Like PC Man and Thunar are about equal to me. They're, uh, I don't have a really a, much of a preference. Comes with Firefox. Uh, we have LXQT settings, LXQT configuration center. So we can take a look at the appearance all right so we have Cavantum we have Cavantum dark does that make any difference no okay icon themes okay we could choose a different icon for example does that make any difference no not really this one could make it oh I always like this one Ooh, and that makes a big difference down here. This is kind of the um kind of the orange thing. The orange thing. Oh my god. I just had a brain fart. This is kind of like the original Ubuntu colors. I like this actually. Arch colors. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Nice. Yeah, that you that's kind of like an old Arch Linux type look yeah uh i could definitely do that okay our darker boom boom so none of these are gtk theme so none of this is being affected these are uh qt q yeah you know what i mean um we can ooh well we don't have let's see if that works okay save that let's see here so i have oh it has a little bit of transparency uh this doesn't on top but this does have a little bit of transparency and i could actually set that transparency oh okay I haven't messed with Cavantum that much because I use, um, I've done it a little bit in some of my tiling window managers, but I usually actually write a script for it and just uh, place it in the config file. It's a lot easier that way. Additional drivers, events, network configurations, alternative configurator. Okay, so. I'm not sure what any of this is. Okay, so I'm not sure what any of those are. About LXQT, the authors, uh, project, translators, all that, the contributors and the team. Let's just take a look. All right, so we're running about 690 megabytes right out of here. And that seems pretty consistent. Um, very good on the resources. And I just saw something else I wanted to check out. And so let me see here. Q QT terminal. Um, this is a really good terminal, by the way. Um, it's not my terminal of choice, but it will definitely get the job done. And they have a lot of different, uh, a lot of different, things right out of the box to get you up and going and if you live in your terminal this is as good as any of them um, let's go ahead they're asking you if you want to close like certain things that's pretty cool disk startup disk creator that's interesting create a startup disk oh this is remaster sys i'll bet 
watch. This is something like Remastersis, right? This kind of looks like Remastersis, I think. I don't know. I, I could be wrong. Um, I, I'd i like to know more about that. Um, I have I I never did use remaster sys but I do remember it quite a bit so you got a screensaver printer stuff software sources let's see Okay so this is this is the old okay so basically this is like the old menu that they used to have to choose which repository that you were going to pull from. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. This makes a ton of sense. And actually, I was kind of surprised that I didn't see that in the others. But anyway, pretty much everything's uh, image magic, Alex image, screen grab. Like everything makes a lot of sense on this. Um, you know, over here you have a like clipboard volume, you have the eject, you know, like if you have like a USB, I forget which panel this is. I think this is just LX, L, LX panel, LX QT panel, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, this is the same panel that's on LXDE, if I'm not mistaken, which is a really good panel. I really enjoy using it. I actually like that panel better than I like uh, XFCE panel, if I'm being perfectly honest. Of course, I use a tiling window manager, so it's neither here nor there. But anyway, this makes a lot of sense for minimalist people who like things like open box. This makes a ton of sense, and if you wanted to get up and going and wanted something that was akin to open box i think this is a perfect distro to get started actually you might enjoy it so much that you use it your entire life there's so much that makes sense and the other thing that i did notice and i just wanted to just call it bring it up to everyone's attention um i might have yeah this thing comes with Vim installed, and that does surprise me. I did not think that they would include Vim in this. They don't include Vim in, in Ubuntu, but in KDE and LXQT, they include Vim. All right. Well, anyway, this is Ubuntu 24.1. This is pretty awesome desktop. I could see myself using this. Now, with Subuntu, now you're going to want to like keep watching because I got a Give me an extra surprise. All right, let's go ahead and get this show on the road, shall we? I think it's right here. There we are. Go ahead and get rid of this screen. All right, we have Subuntu. All right, let's go ahead and full screen that baby. This is a pretty minimal desktop, I must add. I kind of like it. Whisker menu right up here. Should probably do something with this icon if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, some other things. This makes a lot of sense. Settings. Let's go over here to the appearance. Um, yeah, let's make that dark. I like dark themes. Let's go to the desktop settings because I want to get rid of the icons. No right click menu. That's weird. Okay. Uh, terminal emulator. Let's see. XFC for terminal terminal emulator. Cool. I like a XFCE terminal. There's a lot of things that I like about this already. Mail reader, file browser, Thunar, no doubt. Um, let's see here. Synaptic package manager, GW. Very good. Firmware updater, disk usage analyzer. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so just the overall disk usage. Okay. Very good. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, does it come with like HTOP or something? I wonder. All right, sudo app install. 
Uh, all right. Here we are. Okay, so right out the gate, it is about 800, about 800 uh, megabytes with RAM. That's pretty good. Um, you might be able to get it down to like 600, five or 600 if you like really stripped it. But I think uh, 800 is a, you know, seven, 800 megabytes is really good. This is another one that I think would make a lot of sense uh, for like a lot of developers that I know and different things. I think this will make perfect sense to them. You got catfish file search. That's cool. I've never actually used it, but I know people who do uh, in Grandpa Archive Manager. I've used that a couple of times. Not for a while. Mate Calculator. That's uh, curious. Uh, mouse pad. All right, uh, let's see here. Color scheme, let's go somewhere as dark, for example. Perfect. GNU, uh, GNU image manipulation program. Very good. Or GIMP, games, I don't care. Sudoku, all right, cool. Mind, all right, App Center. This thing's probably firing on all cylinders, right? Yeah. Very good. This is some really good stuff here, and no doubt is uh, installed through Snaps. Okay. And we'll see what else other accessories. Except burn. That's curious. Does anybody burn CDs and DVDs anymore? Kind of curious why that's a screenshot that's a good that's good uh fonts a uh, bunch of other stuff this is definitely a win for ubuntu or subuntu or whatever you want to call it uh this is a nice old simple xfce uh layout there's no plank or no it's just a very simple layout and you can, it's up to you to do whatever it is that you're going to do with this desktop. I like it. I think this makes sense for a lot of developers to use something like this. Like there's not too many bells and whistles and different things. And everything just looks like it's working right out of the box. Like, honestly, I actually like this distro a lot already. Just what I'm looking at it. You know, just the little I've seen. It looks like they've been polishing this up and this is actually just working, right? And I think they've had a lot more collaboration with, uh, you know, developers from different projects and different things come on here and basically help out and that sort of thing. At least that's the what I've heard. You might check it out, you know, like I said. This is the, this isn't the LTS version and it's all polished. It looks really good. And I can tell you that this is something that, you know, if I was, you know, in 2015, 2016, and you presented this to me, I'd probably just use it. And I would have probably chose this. I might have chosen this over Arch, to be honest. I mean, I could see it, you know, I would definitely play around with it. I would have seen if this would fit my needs better than Arch, for example. And it, those of you who've listened to my story about Arch, it's quite interesting because, well, Arch used to just be more stable in a lot of ways. I think I've already mentioned that, though. So anyway... Let's go ahead and check out the next one. Ubuntu Mate, everyone. Let's go. All right. Let's take a look at this. All right. Um, this definitely has kind of an interesting, has two panels, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, I'm not a big fan of having two panels personally. I'm sure I could get rid of one. Yeah, I could delete this panel if I wanted and I might here in a minute restore hidden windows 
All right. I actually am curious about things interface. This is my biggest gripe. And if, if somebody could help me with this, oh, I like that. That's a really nice, that's really nice. Now, somebody could help me with this. Like, like some of us just hate the icons on the desktop. If you got rid of the icons on the eyes, a desktop i guarantee you more people would use this i really believe that i believe that with my whole heart i hope like i can get somebody to change this because honestly if you could if you could do this oh my god that i think it would be great and i thought it might be here show icons in menu so in this menu you're showing icons but if i check that right then and here's my internal error this makes me think that this isn't very polished okay oh no so maybe not now i've heard that you could use like d bus or something like this to remove the desktop icons and I've always tried to do that and I've never succeeded. I've succeeded in removing some of them, but I can't remove all of them. Um do they have dbus installed on here? Let's see what other uh I know I was looking at it a, a minute ago. See I I don't particularly like this <laughs> desktop, so let's try something more Okay, that's pretty nice. Not that one. I like this one better. Not that one. I remember this one. I used to love this desktop. Okay. All right, let's take a look at what we got. Okay, additional drivers, App Center. Let's see if this App Center works at all. Okay, yeah, it's pretty snappy, just kind of like the others. I guarantee if I install anything, it installs it like really quickly. Um, this whole snap thing, I know a lot of Linux purists hate it. I don't. I use snaps even on Arch Linux. So I would use snaps in Slackware <laughs> if you allowed me to. Okay. And that just seems snappy. I remember when it was so buggy. Uh, let's just go through App Center Appearance uh, Kaha. Kaha is a really good uh, file browser. It's probably one of my favorite, probably my you know, top three or four at least. And it may actually, if I actually used it more, I may even like it more than I like PC Man FM, if I'm being perfectly honest. I really appreciate it. Um, this and grandpa evolution. I haven't used evolution yet. I've been meaning to try that out. Maybe I might. File management. Oh, okay, so it's just the. Huh, I wonder. Okay, so a lot of this is for this. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Wow, cool. So there's a lot of really cool stuff here. I was just checking it out. I actually really like this. If I'm being perfectly honest, I I do really like, you know, everything that I'm seeing so far. Pluma. This is a really good text editor. Um, Probably one that, I don't know if this would be my first choice, but it definitely is not bad um i kind of like it i don't use text editors like that much anymore since i use neovim but perfect i'll add it sure and that seems to be pretty cool there's a whole bunch of mate stuff that i want to see i just want to check out i didn't check out adderall Adderall, Atrel, whatever it's called. This is, um, let me see. Yeah. 
interesting these are really good uh i i have probably prefer some of these tools to what i'd find in xfce but okay so mate color selection mate calculator mate dictionary mate disk image mount disk let's look at the disk usage you don't really have anything to check your resources i don't think probably don't want you to oh here we go a system monitor this is great okay 1.2 gigabytes a little higher than um xfce i would say because there's really nothing open so where why are we having this this is like something like the gnome desktop um i think that mate has lost a lot of support over the years and this is probably why you're not seeing better results and that's pretty much it webcamoid firmware updated power statistics what's magnus magnifying glass right yeah So this is Mate, everyone. I actually enjoyed taking a look at this. Um, the one thing that I'm going to say is I don't think a lot of people are going to choose this distro for a couple of reasons. One is this right here. Most desktop users that I know do not like icons in their desktop. They like to look at their desktop just as it is and especially like when you have terminals open that are like semi-transparent or something they don't want to see a whole bunch of that uh, bunch of icons that's my experience that's one the other one is it took forever to install and to load like you gotta do better with the boot times you just that's just like bare minimum you gotta do better with the uh boot times and that's pretty much all i got to say about this i think a lot of people are gonna pass on this if i'm being perfectly honest even though there is like a really good kind of a you know nice experience for the most part but the fact that you can't customize it to make it your own like you could with gnome 2 yeah I, I, you can customize like the colors, you know, your background colors and your wallpaper, but that's about it. I, I don't see where you can remove the icons. I think in Dbus you can, maybe, but if you don't have a clear way to remove the desktop icons, you don't have, you know, ways to, you know, personalize it like you would with XFCE. And also, you got to get it way more efficient. You got to get this thing down to about 700 megabytes and just make it, you know, be firing on all cylinders. The problem is with this particular distro or this particular flavor, I mean, is it doesn't matter which distro you're talking about. The Mate desktop has just been waning and just kind of been it, it just has taken a back seat and there hasn't been really any new development probably for four or five years they're just re-spinning the same thing and a lot of times if you take a look like i mentioned in one of my other videos solus took it out of their uh they actually preferred that desktop and they just scrapped it for xfce now i don't know how you justify just keeping everything the same and not giving people choice and giving people a more pleasant experience and not really doing any development to further this desktop. Because I think if people did that, if there was, if you furthered this desktop, people would use it. And I'll bet you if you could actually put this with Compass, I think people would use it too. But um, now that we're going towards Wayland, this is a perfect opportunity to basically reinvent yourself because I honestly think that this could be another project where it could gain some traction because 
there's barely any Wayland in the XFCE desktop. There's like three lines of code as far as Wayland is concerned in the XFCE desktop. So I, I see a very big potential for them to actually make some headway here. But right now as it stands, I think a lot of people are going to pass on this. Next up, Budgie Desktop. Yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. And remember, there's a surprise out there. So stick around. Sometimes I amaze myself. Okay, here we are. All right, here we go. Budgie Desktop, everyone. Get into it. Oh, really nice. Now we got a few things. We got the Budgie Welcome. We have LibreOffice. We have the launch files and we have Firefox. So we have a lot of things here that are really nice right out of the gate. I, I do like this user experience right here. You can choose the, like the number of virtual desktops You can switch between them very easily. You can click on them or control alt arrow key. I wonder what it would take to get like Vim key bindings to work, but that's just something. Quick note. Ooh, this is nice, actually. This actually makes a lot of sense. Um, sometimes I actually like to do stuff like this. And then you have paste, copy, that sort of thing. So like if you needed to paste something really quick. So if I went here, like you could get open straight up to documents. Okay, this is kind of a clash between color schemes. If I'm being honest, like I would have, if it were me, I would have like uh, purple files, purple icons here to make it match. But other than that, I mean, it, it's so far looking good. Um, notification, and I think this is Raven right here. Remember this apps devices man this is a real this has come a long ways i remember the beginnings of this desktop it's got a nice little like what is this uh panel anyway can i um no that's not what i meant to do i meant to just see what that panel was anyway it's it, it looks nice it's sleek um let's see here and now you have kind of a, a more traditional type uh, um, menu bar. Okay. Very good. Budgie discourse, makeovers and layouts. Okay. So you have different layouts. Arc design. So let's see what this does. Okay. This is kind of interesting. I think this has actually come a long way since I remember using it. This is definitely for like, you know, people who like Macintosh. <laughs> see about this one. Ooh, okay, back to the same one. Okay. Um, all right. You should have the ability to choose like a dark theme. And why are these icons always blue? Like no matter what the theme is. Like, uh, yeah. Let's see here. I'm installing this just to see how long it takes to install. I've never installed this, so I have no idea. Okay. This is interesting. Let's apply the makeover. Okay. Very white. Hmm. I don't like that at all. But a lot of these make a lot of sense. Materia. Materia. Okay. Yeah, I remember this one. All right. We're installing that, maybe. I don't know if they are or not. I kind of like this. This could work for me. 
So let's just take a look. So we have budgie everything, budgie screenshot, budgie welcome, characters, file roller. Oh, I know what that is. That's, um, yes, I know exactly what that is. Uh, yes, yes, uh, file roller. It's, um, I can't think of it right now off the top of my head, but I know exactly what that is. Files. Okay, I'm thinking that this is most likely um, the GNOME file manager. Um, Nautilus. Is that right? So I think it's Nautilus. I, I don't know for sure, but uh, very nice, uh, very sleek. G edit very good very good menu editor okay this is really handy sometimes not very often though passwords and keys that might actually come in handy and i did make a uh a statement earlier saying that i didn't like kd um k wallet it's not that I don't like like a password manager. That's not it at all. Yeah, um, I think this would be appealing to like Mac users. Um, this is definitely an appealing desktop. I think there's a lot of work that's been done to it to just basically appeal to uh, that sort of uh, crowd and I think it's wonderful I think you could actually um, garner a lot of people who would really like this if they were you know used to using something like Macintosh and even people who are like Windows users you know I mean you have this little plank down here and got the nice bar up here and you know a nice window here and I remember you used to be able to uh, I'm trying to see how you would uh, edit it, but you used to be able to easily edit this bar. And I don't know how to do that now, but before it was really easy to edit the bar. And um, the last time I looked at Budgie was right in the beginning when there was really nothing in the AUR except for just the desktop and all the accessories I basically installed from you know basically xfce so i had a bunch of assorted mix of like budgie desktop and xfce you know components like you know thunar file manager and that sort of thing it was really interesting and this project has gone a long ways i have literally have not looked at it in 10 years um very good though uh i think this would be I don't think very many people are going to pass on this as a uh, viable option. I, I just don't. All right. Well, go ahead and take a look at my last one. Okay. Just as I promised, I did promise to have something special left for the very end. And it's for all those Linux minimalist lovers. We're going to have fun with Fun OS. Let's go check it out let me go ahead and wipe the cobwebs away <laughs> all right let's take a look at it let's change some wallpapers really quick like let's set the wallpaper i'm going to take a stab and say that that's nitrogen here's the default wallpaper all right as you can tell i was looking at this so here we are and it is pretty cool um like you have a lot this uh fun os comes with um jim's joe's joe's window manager and this is just firing on all cylinders so let's check this out watch let's see here h top i think we have right no sudo app install h top All right, so now we've ran a couple of things. It's under 400 megabytes of RAM. I was running this earlier today, 
it was running 230 megabytes of RAM. This is amazing to me. So let's check out some of the other wallpapers. So let first of all, terminal is LX terminal, I believe, right? Yeah. And file manager, PC man FM, right? Uh, mouse pad, of course, Firefox, and then this is nitrogen. I'll prove it here, right here. Nitrogen looks good, and it comes pre installed with Vim, which makes me real happy camper because, like, why wouldn't you have Vim pre installed as a text editor? Just blows my mind. Uh, I don't expect you to have NeoVim installed. I mean, it'd be cool if you did, but okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and set another wallpaper. There's a couple of really cool wallpapers in here, like this one or this one. I think this one was my favorite so far. Really like that. All right, and you can see that this is just pretty freaking cool. And you can see I previously installed the menu. There it is. Very easily. So now, if you were going to go do the minimalist thing, you're pretty much already set. You got PyCom installed and configured. You have the menu, right? And all you need is probably like ST terminal, maybe, or something. Let's see if you, let's, uh, let's see if I have it. I might actually have it. No, I don't think so. All right. So I have something like ST or Alacrity or Kitty installed, right? And, you know, after that, you install something like Ranger and a few CLIs, and you're on your way to having a really cool, uh, like, uh, window manager. You'll have a really good window manager setup, and then... If that weren't enough, you could probably do something like it has Vim. I was looking right. Oh, I bet you I know. It's because it comes in the snap package. All right, let's just go ahead and install Vim then. I thought it came with Vim, and it does, but it comes with Vim inside of a snap pack, and that probably, that's probably why it doesn't work. Okay, so right here, you can see, like, if you were going to make a, like, a keyboard shortcut to open D menu or to launch your terminal from something other than Control-Alt-T, um, you would do it right here. It's very easy, like you could do something like Oh, okay, I see what I did wrong. Hold on. So I'm just showing you like what is possible. Here we go. It's wondering why the the it was not actually responding so now i should be able to just do oh, oh i got to read bit uh, let's see here do i have to restart it so kill all jwm so i should be able to just launch it there we are it launches right up top very easy so you can easily put in your key bindings and you have a window manager, um, essentially, where you can set your key bindings very easily and much easier than in OpenBox. So this, is again, is Joe's window manager. It's uh, one of my favorite all-time window managers. I don't use it very often, but I really do have a lot of respect for this window manager. Uh, I've used it in the past off and on. It, it's pretty cool. You have a lot of other simple adjustments, but I think with this, that will get you up and going and you'll have a minimalist setup. And then if you wanted, well, 
You could just install a tiling window manager like BSPWM or SpectreWM or anything else after that. And actually, uh, that might be a future video is how to install a window manager on Ubuntu because I don't think Spectre WM is in the repositories, but I think it is a pretty easy install. And so I might actually show you how to do that. Happy belated 20th birthday. As you can see, I'm not hating on anyone. There's something for everybody, even if I would not normally ever use this distro. And I probably won't ever use this distro. So a lot of people will ask me like what I think the appeal is. Maybe you're coming from Debian, Fedora, Arch, whatever it is, whatever distro you're coming from. What is the appeal to Ubuntu, especially to new users, but even more than that, maybe developers, what would be the appeal? And I have to say, there's one thing that really does stand out to me that would be an appeal to me personally. And that is as a developer. These tools just come out of the box. They're set up and you can get up and going. It has a pretty good looking desktop environments that, you know, will just kind of get you, you know, started really quickly. And I think that that would be very appealing to a beginner developer who doesn't know a whole lot about Linux. Like you don't know anything about tiling window managers or window managers or why you would use a window manager or any of these other things. You just want to get up and going. I think this is very, very effective. Now, the second appeal that I personally see with Ubuntu that I think is a big selling point for them is their servers. I think their servers are excellent. I have deployed many servers, Ubuntu servers over the years. And I've done that actually probably as recent as three or four months ago. I've never spoken bad about Ubuntu servers because I actually think they take the guesswork out of the whole deployment process. That's not the case in Debian or Fedora, for example. They do not take the guesswork out. If you don't know what you're doing, you could get in big trouble. Fortunately for me, I do know what I'm doing, but that's neither here nor there. If you're running like a proper CI CD pipeline, I actually think an Ubuntu server makes a lot of sense most of the time. So I saw on the website that it was preferred by most developers. I could see why. Although I'm not sure of the accuracy of that because there are things that I prefer Fedora over Ubuntu. There are things that I prefer Debian over Ubuntu when it comes to servers. So uh, it just depends on a use by use or a case by case basis, uh, which one I'm going to use. And that's pretty much my video for today. What do you think of Ubuntu? Is it worth checking out? Is it still hot trash? What do you think? Leave me a comment in the section below. And as always, have a great day, everyone. Peace.